going to do a quick video because I'm kind of in the middle of it already. Uh, the other day I picked up this uh, Radio Shack TR803 Stereo Record Playback 8-track. Right here. Uh, besides the usual uh, switch cleaning and whatnot, I had no left channel. And I troubleshot it with a signal tracer down to a Q106. It is 106 and 206. I lost the signal at Q106. On the base, nothing. Everything looked suspicious around this Dolby module, though. Uh, so that's what I've gotten to. I've taken the... After getting nowhere, and the schematic on the bottom of my board, uh, they, they pasted the schematic on the bottom of the case, and uh, mine is absent. Um... I was able to get a copy of another, and it all um, it just supported my, I had already troubleshot, it just supported my theory that the problem is around this Dolby circuit. This is complex more than a player because it's a recorder, and it has the Dolby NR, so, and it has a fast forward, which will mute the audio when you're fast forwarding. It's just a... It's just more complicated, and no schematic doesn't help. Now, folks have said they've never seen an LM, uh, uh, well, this is a LM1011N, go bad, National Semiconductor. Uh, so I've gone ahead and recapped the board. I know this is bad because I took the one out of the good channel, and I placed it in the left channel, and it operates. So that's that. The problem is on this board. I've recapped it. I have a couple left to do. I have some new capacitors, of course, but I, I've also, for this, I've scavenged from uh, karaoke and uh, I think an Emerson boombox or stereo setup. Okay. I have a new set of capacitors here, but uh, most of them are, the voltage is higher than what, uh, what I need. Uh, I'll just, I'm just going to scavenge out of what I have. Modern electronic throwaways. Okay, caps are all replaced. And this Emerson here, this uh, boombox, seems to be quite the donor here in the past few videos. So this gives up a lot of good parts there, the Emerson. Uh, there's where your Dol Dolby module goes. As you can see, I took the one out of the right, placed in the left, and the left is now working. So I'm going to take the lefts, and I'm going to tack it in the right. There's only nine connections plus the ground, so I really only have to tack one side of the finger uh, so to speak, and uh, a ground on top uh, in case I have to take this out again. Okay, we've checked our work. There we are installed. We'll power up. I'm on pause. I have my left and right channels over here. Left and right. So, let's just see. Take off pause. Now, it does need a belt. I'm not worried about it. The sound may be a little slow, but that's fine. That's the left side. Still no right side. See, the module is still defective. No right channel. So the problem was no left channel before, so it's not capacitors. It's something in this module. It's the chip. Oh, we'll leave it here for now. So there you have it in closing. We'll replace the LM1011N and see what happens. Uh, the caps did not do it. I've checked the values of the resistors. They're fine. Connections are fine. Let's not over troubleshoot. Let's get a chip. Okay. Upon further inspection, uh, if you notice, you can see it in the glare there. See that? There's a hole in this chip right there. You can see it about a third of the way in. I don't know if the camera will focus on that, but it's right there. I guess that tells me the chip is bad, too. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully there'll be a Part 2 success story.